And here comes Anna Meyer out to face J.C. Pahotal in the circle. And Pahotal gets the sure too that ball looks like it is a brand new pearl softball and so when it's a little bit humid and it's hot like a day like it is today and you're throwing a new softball it can slip out of your hand a little bit it's not easy to throw and you see how beautiful and shiny it is and bright yellow somebody needs to mess that up you can tell that, <laughs> you can tell that is a pearl is what we called it and you hated to throw them <laughs> because they were slippery <laughs> out of the packaging Outside corner. That's a fastball that Pahotal will work with Lobaton back behind the plate. Very tight knit battery. Again, this defense constantly communicating and moving their bodies out on the field. And JC Pahotal starts out with a strikeout. Remember, she native Filipino food, so they feel like they have a little piece at home of home with them. I know they have a giant sign over there, too. They are ready to cheer on this Philippines team. Morgan McBride at the plate for Canada. Morgan is super powerful at the plate. And Coach Diana told us that speed should be her middle name. Oh man, she's probably so bummed yeah. because she was just getting used to that ball or poor face. I think because it hit, you know, the fence or the metal, you heard it, he's got to switch it out. Wow, there's a lot of energy in here right now for the Philippines. <laughs> they cheer every pitch. A tight knit connection and have their flags and we need to figure out what these are called the blue and the yellow things that they're waving if they have any kind of I think it's a balloon name it's just a balloon oh yeah like you would make a balloon animal out of okay I was looking thinking too hard about it Bride fouls that pitch off. 2-2 Two -two count here. This will be the seventh pitch coming to Morgan. Got her on it. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, JC. Now, you'll notice that Crystal Lobaton, the catcher, gets up a little bit. She wants this pitch more up in the zone and the hotel. Maybe it wasn't up enough as Lobaton wanted it, but it got the job done. Second strikeout for the hotel, and she is feeling good in the circle right now. Number three hitter, J.C. Johnson.
Yeah, man, you see Lobaton working so hard back behind the plate. That's her way of helping Pahotal have a better target, reminding her to throw that pitch more up in the zone by standing up out of her crouch a bit. We'll see where she goes here. Wants it high again. That pitch is supposed to be inside, and it was outside. I love the way that Lobaton receives. Their manager, Nelson Esmerlin, was a catcher himself, spoke very highly of Lobaton back behind the plate. Yeah, you'll see her. She goes by Chelsea, but she has been great so far. Full count coming to J.C. Johnson. J.C. versus J.C. right now. <laughs> How composed Pahotal is. If she struck out the first two batters, she should feel great. Make it three! J.C. Pahotal making her presence known. Lead off for the Philippines. Canada 5 0 in their regional. They beat, it was played in Victoria, British Columbia, and they beat the British Columbian team 8 4 in that championship game. And Diana Jordison had took over this team for the first time this year and really made sure that they traveled around so they saw a lot of different types of teams. And also, she said, we played a few less games in order to have some more practice time where we could really teach the girls the game. Well, that's all with the bunt. Throw just beat her there. Good defensive play out here by Canada. Look at that backhand that Stranahan said, no, I don't want you, Morgan McBride, the third baseman, to have it. I'm going to have it. I'm going to take it and show off my arm to make that play at first base. What a play by Stranahan to get the speed of low baton. Now, Audrey Matanrong up next for the Philippines in the two spot, the center fielder. I will say too, Courtney, after that play, Devin Power, the catcher, was out in the field, past the circle, giving some love to Anna Meyer on that play as well to come over and cover her space. tell that Power has a big personality back behind the plate. She's another co-captain with Stranahan. Big energy and big passion, and you can tell it with, look how intense her eyes are, her presence is from the very get-go. One gets away from Stranahan just a little bit. It's a smaller strike zone with the little fran of Audrey at the plate. And sometimes that can throw a pitcher off a little bit. The strike zone isn't just the same strike zone for every single hitter. It varies off of the size. <laughs> Audrey is, is a tiny little thing up there. She's 10. Young, young. Well, you just have to turn 10 before December of 2021. And that'll be a strikeout for Ella Stranahan. 
Stranahan just painting the outside corner. Even though Power was actually set up on the inside corner, this fastball gets pulled over her body and she nips that outside corner for the looking strikeout. And look at Power again. I mean, she is just all over the field. I would love for her to put a pedometer on her body <laughs> for a game and see how many steps that she takes. Cher Blancha, the number three hitter for the Philippines. Do you like that as a pitcher, having an active catcher? Yeah, I love it. I love the energy and feeding off of each other. Especially when it comes from a good place. Sometimes you can see somebody force energy or just say, oh, somebody told me to do this, so this is how I'm going to act. But you can tell with Devin Power, it is real. It is a deep passion with how she plays the game. Blancha will get to do this one again. A ball and two strikes. one today here in Greenville, but a pretty nice night for softball as the sun has gone down. Our fourth game of opening day. It's a good take by Blancha. Their coaching staff talked about how she's the smartest player on the team. Plays shortstop, always has to be thinking ahead, always has to have a good approach and good at bats at the plate. She enjoys watching UCLA softball too, Amanda. And plays volleyball. Well-rounded athlete right there. Has a new helmet on, still has that sticker fresh <laughs> on the top of it. <laughs> Love it. She has a good game. That sticker might stay on forever. Yeah, can't take <laughs> it off. It's full count coming from Ella Stranahan to Chair Blancha. First time the Philippines has reached tonight. No batting, number 16, Kazuya Valenzuela. So now with two outs, it's up to Kazuya Valenzuela to step up. Can they get that walk to work in their favor? And she's one of, if not the tallest players on this Philippines team. Their average height overall is the smallest in the World Series. Yeah, the Philippines average height, five feet even. And they're also one of the youngest teams. Runner going. And she is safe. Blancha to second. Look at Philippines putting Blancha in motion with two outs, trying to get her in a scoring position. I'm a little bit late on that side. I was worried about her ankle, but she's all good. Stolen base for Chair Blancha. Valenzuela with the hit, and that throw sails over the head at first. Blancha scores. 
And they'll say the runner is safe at second. Valenzuela all the way over to second base and brings in a run. Look at how important that stolen base was by Blanche. If she doesn't steal on the pitch before, she's not able likely to score on this error. Lexi McKay holds on to this ball a little bit too long, maybe trying to guide it, maybe some nerves out there, but Philippines able to score first and Valenzuela able to get a good read with that ball over the first baseman's head and make her way to second base. So no RBI on the play, it is an error on the shortstop, but Philippines will take that run and brings us to the pitcher, JC Pahotal, who struck out the side in the top of the inning. And it's a big deal to score first today because teams that score first are 3-0 today. Bauer hops up around power and over moves Valenzuela to third. Advances on the pass ball. She's okay with her right wrist. You can see that she's trying to shake it out and end up letting go of her bat. Did the ball hit it? Or is it just came around funny on the swing? I think maybe came around funny again. And Ellis Stranahan, her second strikeout, but not before the Philippines, brings in her. In a Our counterparts, they'll take care of the day games, we'll take care of the night games. We got you all covered here on ESPN Plus. JC Pahotal struck out the side to start the game, and now she'll start with the number four hitter, Tatum LeCavalier. In fact, five of the six outs, total outs in the first inning, were strikeouts. LeCavalier drops it in center, and Canada has made contact. A beautiful swing by Le Cavalier. This is one of the best swings that I have seen today. I love a good left-handed, smooth power swing. To me, there's nothing else like it. Le Cavalier making the adjustments immediately, leading off the inning with a powerful single. Speaking of power, Devin Power. This is the catcher we've been talking about and her favorite softball player, Allie Shipman, the catcher at Alabama. <laughs> jc has been pretty tough for Canada to figure out so far. She's ahead right now, 0-2. And she's spinning the ball well, and she's also getting them to chase that pitch up out of the zone. The thing about JC is that she just throws that fastball. She is trying to master that fastball, have, doesn't throw a lot of other pitches, and throw any other pitches. In fact, that fastball is a pitch that she's going to throw on both sides of the plate, be able to spot it more up in the zone, and work with low baton. Her favorite player is Michelle Smith, who will be here on Friday. A fourth strikeout tonight, tonight for J.C. Pahotal. Again, going up in the zone. Look at Lo Baton. She is up out of her crouch, asking for that pitch to be more up. Ella Stranahan. so great to be able to watch Lobaton work behind the plate because you're able to to see her just constantly working and trying to help the hotel out by 
setting up a certain way, putting her glove in a certain spot, a pitch, another one more up in the zone. I think that one was actually supposed to be more down, but likely on this next pitch, you'll see her get up out of her crouch again, probably ask for one that is up and in on the hands. Like that. Back-to-back K's, ring them up as Amanda predicts the future over here. I mean, Pahotal is just on a strikeout spree. These hitters are having a tough time see it out of her hand. It's causing them to guess a bit right now. She's thrown with good velocity, and this up pitch is working. Lexi McKay. I mean, right now, nobody else in the field you even have to worry about. It is Pahoto and Lobaton right now doing what they're doing best, communicating, working well together, being a complete battery. Trying to help her out on that lower pitch right there, but I'm so impressed with what we're seeing out of Pahoto and Lobaton together. Do you think it helps? I mean, they spend a lot of time together, two practices a day, then they go to school together, they all live together. There's a sp special connection there for sure. Look at that up wow. pitch after up pitch after up pitch. Canada just chasing out of the zone. And if you're Pahoto, you keep throwing it there. There's no reason really to bring it down. She's throwing a lot of strikes, double the amount of strikes as balls. Two two now to Lexi McKay. Tatum LeCavalier was the only one to get a hit off of Pahotal tonight. She's at first. It's going to be up to Canada to try to make her throw strikes. I feel like they've done a good job down in the zone, but it's been up in the zone where they've been more vulnerable. Oh, that wow. like a strike to me. That was such a close call. I thought it got the bottom of the zone, but... Good eye by Lexi McKay to take that pitch. I think that's right at the knees, down the heart of the plate. Canada with two on. Emma Nechtel, the center fielder. Pahotal has already struck out five Canadian batters tonight including the first three she faced in the first inning. You were mentioning this Canadian team and Coach Jordison's goal was to get them to play different teams. Maybe not play as many games, but I loved how she talked about trying to get them out of their bubble. Close-knit group. They have really good team chemistry, this Canada team. They're a really fun group to be around. And she was telling us, too, almost every player for Canada is playing multiple sports right now. There you see Diana Jordison, her first year. In the neck tool, and it's scooped in right field by Palmera. Five is Very fun nightcap so far, the Philippines and Canada. The Philippines scored on an error in the first inning. Valenzuela was the one up at the plate, the number four hitter. When that error occurred, she was able to reach and bring around a run. And now Ann Manalo, whose role model is her mother. Oh, that's sweet. It's really sweet. Favorite player, Monica Abbott. They love the left-handed pitchers on this team that had careers or have had careers in Japan. Monica Abbott, Michelle Smith. This one rolls over to Anna Meyer, who makes the play at second.
Our producer, Chris Damiani, said he wishes that his name was Princess. Didn't he say that on our call? <laughs> yeah. It's a heck of a name. I love it. <laughs> I could see him as a prince. Oh, prince. Princess, I think. I think it was Princess. I like it. You know, Manolo had said that her mother is her role model, and this Philippines team doesn't get to see their parents throughout the year. Whenever they go to school, they stay at school, and they work out there. They do homework. They just stay at school, and they're four to five hours away from where their parents are, where they're working. Yeah, and a lot of times their parents can't afford to, to make the trip over, so the coaching staff told us, you know, they'll get to talk to their parents maybe once a month or video call them but they send them off to school to play softball and get an education because they have their future in mind. He mentioned that they will practice two times a day, 5 a.m. and 2 p.m., getting in two days in the summertime, practicing at 5 a.m., and then they'll go back to sleep. They have to wake up so early. Talk about dedication, though. You can tell that this is a team, while they're not very big in stature, they're very fundamentally sound. You can tell they know the small details and aspects of throwing and fielding a ground ball and swinging and pitching. Love to do what they what they do. You can tell they just really enjoy it. Great hit by Ablig. Solid contact for Princess. Good piece of hitting, full count. She gets this outside pitch, just shoots it the other way. Level swing, gets on plane with that outside pitch and just lets Stranahan provide the power, finds a hole on the right side. First hit for the Philippines tonight and Angela Esperita up now with just one out and one on. But trying to move that runner. And now Princess in trouble. Caught in a rundown, and the ball was dropped. And she'll be safe at third. That was scary. I thought she was going to be hung out to dry. Good job of Esperita to lay down this bun, and she rounds second and was a bit indecisive. As soon as she rounded second, you could tell that the manager was holding up his hands for her not to come, but she decided to go and she was hung out to dry. And Canada is able to make that final out. Still a one run game here in our final. Coach said, don't call her that. He's like, all right, we'll go CJ. <laughs> Ooh, pop straight up. Lobaton tracks it down. This girl behind the dish. I mean, all of them on defense. It's just so impressive. But Lobaton back behind the plate. Immediately finds it. Look, she immediately looks up and then understands how does she need to turn her body in order to get herself in a position to catch that. It's easier for a catcher to turn toward the stands to make that catch versus just backpedaling with her back against the wall. Well played by Lobatone. Doesn't even throw the helmet off or anything. Just tracks it. Yeah, and some coaches will coach, will coach that just yeah. to keep the helmet on all the time. But yeah, you're still having to kind of have something obstructing your vision a little bit when you look up. There's something around your face messing with your peripheral vision. And we'll see if now Canada is able to make the adjustments off of that fastball up or does look more like a rise ball. And we heard their manager, Diana Jordison, talking to the team in between innings that, okay, we've seen the up ball. Is there's another strikeout, the sixth strikeout for JC. Pitch up and into these right-handed hitters. Six strikeouts for Pahotal. Look, ladies, Maddie Shipman also swung at some rise balls in her day and missed a few times. She talks about it all the time. Yeah. The rise ball got her. 
And look, it's going to happen, but what you don't want to happen is that it happens for nine batters in a row and now 10. The idea is to say, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to be the one that goes up and sees the ball down. Just takes one, then it makes the second one happen, and the third, and then everybody feels like they have more confidence to, to see it down, to not swing at it. We'll see if Morgan McBride can make that adjustment here for Canada. Yeah, this umpire, too, has more of a higher strike zone. He doesn't call as much, that's at the knees, and so that's definitely working to the hand of Pahotel because she's getting the upper part of the zone right now with a couple of called strikes. And then what happens is that Canada's thinking, okay, we need to lay off that pitch, but then it's getting called. What's it gonna call? What's it not gonna call? What should I swing at? It just starts to get in your head a little bit, even more. Jander. Lobaton all over it. What a player behind the plate. COVID complications this year to play the Asia Pacific tournament. So after this team won the Philippines, they were given the opportunity to represent Asia Pacific based on past experience of coming here and earning that spot before. And actually, one of their assistant coaches, Ryan Blanca, was on that staff in 2019. He came with the team over when it was played in Oregon. And I enjoyed getting the opportunity to talk to their coaches like Ryan and Ernesto earlier today. Get to learn more about this team and their way of life and their way of softball over in the Philippines. And there's their manager, Nelson Esmiliaran as we told you, was a baseball catcher, was asked to come over and help coach this team, pass on his knowledge. Close call, but Lobatone is out at first. And a Meyer with the toss. So we do have minimum mandatory. I don't even know what I just said. Minimum mandatory <laughs> play. Man You're thinking Amanda. Man minimum minimum. Man so <laughs> Amanda. Amanda has to play. Uh, <laughs> so there will be some substitutions as we go on, and that's one of those happening right now. Erica Pachon has stepped into that two spot. She is 11 years old. There's one 10-year-old, I think a trio of 11-year-olds on this Philippines team. Only run, the difference right now in the game is a run that was scored on an error. Cher Blancha in the first inning came home on an error when Valenzuela was up at the plate. Good pitch by Stranahan. I mean, that pitch just cut across the zone. It started in the inside corner, and it's like she snapped it across to the outside corner. Boom. Love the pop of that glove. Her and Devin Power working together. Third strikeout. Now each team only has one hit tonight. Philippines got their first hit from Princess Ablig in the second inning. And here, back up to the plate, Chair Blancha. Favorite food, spaghetti. She's the one that came around and scored the only run for the Philippines. 
It's funny, they all list these favorite foods, but then the coaching staff told us they were all missing rice so much that the families that kind of have welcomed them in, that there was a, you know, the Filipino connection here in Greenville have brought them a ton of rice. And they said, rice is life. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll be saying that for the rest of the week and probably for the rest of my life, I will be remembering that phrase, rice is life. Yeah. I love it. That Nelson told us that was not an option on the 16-hour flight from Manila to New York. They were very sad. Well, and they all <laughs> had never flown before, so they're amped up, they're excited, they're unable to eat, they're probably tired but can't go to sleep. Like, just so many emotions on that flight. Oh, right into the glove of Morgan McBride. Playing the hot corner. Still a one-run lead for the Philippines. One of their best defenders as well, and her brothers and sister actually played. Or she is the youngest one, and they get to help her train. Yeah, what a great resource to have. It's paying off here. Philippines making a splash in their first game at the World Series. She only given up that one hit, one walk. She has one brother and three older sisters actually but she's doing a great job and not looking nervous at all either in her oh, first no. game so just finishing up making some substitutions got to get make sure everybody gets out onto the field The Philippines have 14 players, so they just need one at bat apiece. They don't have to play in the field. Canada has 13 players, so same thing for them. And Jersey McNeil is going to step in to that three spot in the Canada lineup where JC Johnson was. McNeil also plays ringette, and we had to ask what that is. Do you tell? It's very similar to hockey, but it's only played by girls in Canada. There's like a little, Diana was trying to explain it to us. There's a little ring on the end of the stick or something like that. Yeah, I they, have Most never of the girls play it, yeah. Played on ice, just like hockey. Okay. Yeah. A lot of hockey players, too, in this team. Yeah, and a lot of them listed hockey players as their favorite player, too like when they list their favorite athlete. I'm being told it's just a straight stick. They don't have like the, the end blade on it. That seems really we, challenging. Yeah. We need to YouTube this. See if Bohotal tries to go up with that rise ball again. Neil did a good job. Jersey did a good job of fouling that one off to see another pitch here. Number seven for JC. Yeah, able to come further down in the zone when she a little bit, but still gets the strikeout. I think she'll take it. She'll take it. Now this next hitter, Tatum Le Cavalier, is the only one to get a hit for Canada tonight. I don't think that she'll see anything down the zone again because her swing path just looked like it was made. Oh, they're going to walk her. Oh, yeah. Wow. They're going to intentionally walk her. They do not have to throw her the pitches. So just don't even worry about it. Just put her on. She's the only hitter 
one through six in the lineup. Had put the ball in play the first time through. Brings us to Devin Power, the catcher. Just so many good mechanics working for JC at the hotel in a circle. She's not very big, but she's able to get the most out of her frame. She is fluid and smooth. I mean, gets the most out of her body by getting big and open in the middle of her pitch and driving out with her legs. It's tricky too about being a smaller pitcher or just a smaller framed player is that your hands are usually small and they're still playing with a 12 inch ball which is the same size softball that you play with in high school and also in college the olympics professional another strikeout for jc wow they say devon power went getting her to chase again up in the zone, great call by this umpiring crew to ring her up for that one. But because her hands aren't as big, and I can speak as a smaller pitcher myself with smaller hands, it's more difficult to grip the ball. So for her to have the spin that she has and throw at the velocity that she throws at, it's just really impressive because that, that is a big object to throw in a little hand. Yeah. It, really, it really, really is. It's much different than an 11 or 12 year old baseball player who might have small hands, but they're, a baseball is really small, can fit into their hand. A softball, it's a, it's a big object. Yeah. You're a, a tiny human. So for, if you're a younger pitcher watching this, what would you tell them to watch specifically about JC that you like the most? That's a good question. I think the way that she's in her legs, like when she pushes out, she's not standing straight up whenever she lands from the beginning right here. She's in her legs using the ground. Ella Stranahan. It's deep, but not deep enough into the glove <laughs> of Palmera. <laughs> The final four, but the final four remaining we haven't seen yet. Isaiah Valenzuela at the plate to start the fourth inning. She was able to reach on an error that would score a run on that same play in the first inning. Offense has been hard to come by for either team. It really has. And, you know, we're talking about the hotel, but Stranahan has done such a good job for Canada settling into this game, even had that deep fly ball for the third out that she really squared it up, got into a pitch, and then ended up in that third out. But I think she's continuing to work hard. And I mean, Ella Stranahan loves reading. I think that we all love reading to an extent, but Stranahan or Ella loves it so much, she reads over 120 books a year. That's impressive. It's a lot. I mean, hashtag goals. I would like to read 120 books a year too. And she played hockey up until this year. And she's going to try out for volleyball, basketball, and badminton. How cool is that? That's awesome. Oh, that one hits Valenzuela. Looks to be OK, trying to tough it out over to first. Now batting, number 14, J.C. Pajotel. JC Pahotal up at the plate. She struck out seven batters tonight in the circle. You know, she has seven siblings. 
Ages 28 to 8. Wow. Runner in scoring position now. A little bit of speed paying off for the Philippines in this game. Remember, they stole a base in the inning that they scored. Then the next pitch, there was an error, and that led to the run. But it was because of the stolen base that got her 60 feet closer to scoring. And then she did. Another stolen base attempt here. Oh. And the tag will be made. Courtney, I have no idea how Morgan McBride caught this throw because she was looking down at the base. Her glove was just in a certain spot. Check out Morgan McBride, the third baseman. Goes back, looks down, 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 and then looks up. Boom. Wow. Pure instinct, I think, of just seeing the ball in the air after not even knowing that the throw was coming, anticipating it, and then boom, getting your glove to that throw to make the out. And Manalo up. <laughs> this one a slow roller to Anna Meyer at second. About each other and, and being a good teammate. Yeah, and it's given by the players to another teammate. So Diana Jordison told us it's she wants them to recognize who is being a good teammate, not just coming from the coaches. So I think that's pretty cool. Is Lexi McKay is going to lead off here in the fifth? Just one hit apiece for Team Canada and the Philippines in this game. It's been about the pitching, which Amanda I'm sure loves. Yeah, but you know, at the same time, I, I do like to see adjustments, yeah. you know, well, and, yeah. and just to make a pitcher work that much harder for a strikeout or to get outs. And right now with the way that Canada is seeing the ball out of the hand of Paholta, Paholta, sorry. Pahulta. <laughs> sorry. <Yeah. laughs> strikeout number nine. She's just continuing to work this outside corner and then move the ball more up in the zone. I mean, that is just fastball, outside corner, continuing to look good. Nine strikeouts now for JC. Now she'll face Emma Nechtel. Coach Jordison had talked to them about laying off of that high pitch and one of the solutions that she had come up with in between innings that we had a chance to hear her talk to her team about was maybe moving up a little bit in the box. Starting to see that from them here. Doesn't look like a big adjustment. Sometimes you'll see hitters when they move up in the box, not just move a couple of inches, but go all the way to the front or all the way to the back and make it a little bit more extreme. Just trying to get comfortable. Trying to see the ball better tonight. Yeah, how does that help you on that rise ball or that ball up in the zone that she's throwing? Just being able to identify it earlier, being able to notice that it's going to come out of her hand. And that defense. No one crashing from first base, right? Okay, only bunts. Yep. You hear Diana, too, trying to teach in the moment. Hey, recognize the defense. She's crashing in. What, do we, what does that mean? What is that cue in your brain that we're going to do? And good idea, too, but also probably noticing that the first baseman, Manalo, was anchored back toward first base. So it would have been a better bunt to lay it down angled toward the first base side. Instead, Ann over there at first is just going to make an easy catch. So, Jimma Burden coming into the game now to hit for the first time in the ninth spot.
you know, Amanda, Zanaria Hughes had nine strikeouts today, so her and JC are tied right now for the most of this World Series. Just putting that out there in the universe. Yeah, and I love that each of the pitchers that we've seen get a win today have pitched differently. None of them have pitched exactly the yeah. same. You know, you really think about it left handed, right handed, smaller, shorter, rise ball, Faster. changer. Yeah. It's been all about the team that has scored first, and that's what the Philippines has done in this game. The only team that has a run on the board. Yeah, teams that score first have won today in the first three games. And that's strikeout number 10. The most in a game on this opening day. Jay-Z, sad the fact that they're losing and down to their final three outs. And it'll be the Philippines coming up to bat here, trying to extend that lead. We've only had seven base runners tonight, three for Canada and four for the Philippines. So Princess Ableg is the one that's going to step up. She is the only player for the Philippines to have a hit. It was a good one, too, out to right field. And comes in swinging. And we've actually had a substitution. Hezekiah Cuerda. As everybody's trying to make their minimum mandatory play requirements. Ooh, got her on the change to swing. <laughs> Went right back to it. Yes. Back-to-back <laughs> -back back change ups by Ella Stranahan. Love when that happens. And even better, not just when Jewel Bahar is entering the game now in the eighth spot. Stranahan has done a good job tonight. You can tell she's having fun. She smiles, has a unique personality. One of the captains of this team. Works well with Devin Power back behind the plate. Another co-captain. And pretty cool, too. One of her best friends is Morgan McBride, who plays third base. So we're right there next to each other. And I'm sure say some things to each other here and there and try to make each other laugh, keep each other loose. Oh yeah, she says she tells her, Morgan will tell her jokes over from third base. Keep her light in the circle. Were you a uh, joke telling kind of pitcher? Or? You had to pick your moments. I yeah. didn't want to <laughs> I didn't want to hear one all the time. That's but good to know. <laughs> when things were getting a little bit too serious or like things that you couldn't control, that's the time to tell me a joke. If I'm like in a zone and things are going great, don't tell me a joke. <laughs> are we like dad joke or like clever joke? <laughs> Probably something that was going on that was random in the stands. Like, hey, did you see that hot dog over there? Or I don't know. Like yeah. just something Good one. I, like <laughs> not an actual <laughs> joke but just something that's yeah, lighthearted. I know. Nobody, just to five, break two, the five. seriousness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here comes Gina Strada. This will be the first time for her they subbed her out before she had her at bat that was in the original lineup. Palmera came in for her. Right now, Ella Stranahan has struck out the first two batters she's faced in this inning. Yeah, the Philippines have quite a few reserve players. They have five. Yeah, they have 14 players. It's one of the largest rosters. You can have up to 14. Usually you see 13. Because that means you only have to have one at bat. You don't have to have the six defensive outs in the field right. as well. So it's a little bit easier to get that minimum mandatory play requirement taken care of. Oh. 
Well, and Canada's in a good spot. They have top of their order coming up for the top of the sixth inning. And with the way that Ella Stranahan is pitching and getting, and putting herself into another position to get, potentially strike out the side here, get good momentum for Canada. Top of the order coming up. Can they make a comeback? Now it's a full count to Estrada. <laughs> Struck out the side. Get it. Good. All right, time for Team Canada to get those bats going. Just down by a run. We'll take a look at this here. Yeah, she got underneath it. I think they were communicating about if her glove got underneath it at the last second. That's a huge out with Anna Meyer being the leadoff hitter. Every out so important. And a quick one at that too, right? Yeah. And Chelsea Lobatone has made so many amazing plays mm. at catcher tonight for the Philippines. She's dug one out of the netting, like caught a pop-up. She's helped frame up things for her pitcher, JC. Like, she knows her position so well, you can really tell. Big time heads up player, big softball IQ. First pitch strike to Morgan McBride. Canada down to its final two outs. We only play six innings in Little League. from so far away. Philippines just has to be feeling such great energy right now. They are in constant communication on the field. They love to play the game. They had to travel for a day and a half to get here. This is actually Callie Sparks at the plate right now for Canada. Her first time seeing JC. Yeah, what a statement to make from the Philippines to come out in this first game. Look, still two outs left, but you know, other teams are going to have to face the Philippines here in Greenville, and now you've seen them. you got to get ready for the rise ball from JC. Well, and it's important for both teams, too. She goes up in the zone again this time for 11th strikeout. Beautiful. You just don't want to go into extra innings because then both pitchers would have to likely have to pitch that seventh inning, which would force them to take a, a day of rest the next day. So in a close game like this, you start to think about this. Man, I have to go at these hitters, get these outs, because I don't want to go to seven or eight innings and not be able to pitch tomorrow. Yeah. If they played, I know, <laughs> with the bracket. I don't even know. Well, the loser would not play until Thursday, so if they pitch seven innings today, that, that's fine. The max you can pitch in one day is 12 innings. And so you saw that it, in regionals too, it gets a little bit close. Some of these games are very close scores. You may have even had to go into extra innings and managers are having to strategize with their pitchers and make moves. But tonight it's been all Pahotal and her rise ball. She's retired seven straight. It's two balls and a strike right now to JC Johnson. Is this maybe, I mean, we've not seen every game, but maybe one of the best pitching performances ever from a Filipino pitcher here at the Little League Softball World Series? Oh, from a Filipino pitcher? Yeah, I mean, I don't remember seeing anybody like JC. Yeah. It's a big deal with the way that she's throwing when you put it into that context, into that perspective that I mean, we'll have to dig at the record books and see what we can find. But I don't know if anybody has come in here and done what JC Pahotal has done from the Philippines. And there is a hit from JC Johnson. 
the second hit tonight for Canada. Yeah, been since the second inning. And this is a, a huge swing right now with JC Johnson. Making an adjustment on that up pitch. It was a little bit outside. I think Lobaton wanted it up and in on the hands, but it was away and she puts a good swing on it to drive it to the right side. And why this is such a big deal is because now there's two outs, but you put the sweetest swing, in my opinion, up at the plate with Tatum, like Avalier. Now remember, they intentionally walked her last time and they're gonna do it again. This is where, I can't wait to see how Devin Power responds. Their catcher, a co-captain, plays the game with joy, picks everybody else up, plays with just so much passion. And now, here she comes up. Tying run at second, go-ahead run at first, two outs. Do you, do you like walking the Cavalier there? I mean, that puts the tying run in scoring position. You know, it does, but they just, I think, saw something with the matchup and her swing that just was not great for... JC Pahotal and Devin Power has struck out two times. So there needs a special pinch runner here for Le Cavalier. It's Anna Meyer. I'm not sure if there might be a substitution if Canada hasn't played everybody or. Maybe a rules question with Anna Meyer coming in as the special pinch runner. And she is got the hit. She's back out there running for herself now. Let's go. So it will still be Devin Power at the plate with a runner in scoring position. That tying run is at second. Your attention, please. Number 15, Jason Johnson is back on second base. And number eight, Anna Meyer is entering the game as a special pitch runner. For number 14, Tatum LeCavalier on first base. Get the game going. And throw the next pitch. thing for the defense for the Philippines right now is that there is a force at any bag. Power pops up. Abelig underneath it. The Philippines behind an amazing performance from JC Pahotal. Staying alive in the winner's portion of the bracket. <laughs> what an outing by JC Pahotal and this Philippines defense, but Defense made some plays back behind her for sure, but she had 11 strikeouts and just was a strike throwing machine today. Her rise ball was working, fastball outside corner, and gosh, are these Philippines players having fun or what? So much fun. And a great crowd to cheer them on. The Philippines winning a nail biter, one nothing over Canada. We will see the Philippines again tomorrow at 4.30.